Um, there's a lot that has to be done, and we have to, we have to move a little bit. Uh, everything that we've done today, you have already seen, so uh, nothing is going to be uh, new to you as far as this goes. So uh, where we are is page 197. 197. All right, here's the idea. If you get the exam, you'll be looking at an adjusted trial balance. All right, so with one adjusted trial balance with all the adjusting entries, now we have an adjusted trial balance. So that's what you're looking at. All right, remember, the adjusted trial balance is what we use to put together all the financial statements. All right, now, order is important. All right, we do what first? Income statement, then statement of owner's equity, then balance sheet. All right, once we finish the balance sheet, we'll do the closing entries, then we'll do the post closing trial balance, and that's it. Okay, so income statement, statement of owner's equity, balance sheet, uh, closing entries, post closing trial balance. One, two, three, four, five. Got it? Okay, let's go. Um, Here's what it says the, the instructions say do an income statement, do a statement of owner's equity, uh, do a balance sheet. It's exactly what we're supposed to do. So there's there's one, two, three, four, five. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pick it up and go. I'll start the income statement over here. I'll uh, need company name. Last chance. How about that? Last chance. Uh, last chance company. This is an income statement. I do apologize in the back. I do have to write small and for the year. When is it? June 30. 6, 30, 14. There it is. All right. Now, out of our five broad account categories, what two show up on the income statement? Revenue and expense. Remember when you're looking at the adjusted trial balance? It's always in this order. Asset, liability, equity, revenue, expense. All right. So we start from the bottom half. You know, think of it that way. And we're looking for our revenue accounts. On this particular example, our revenue accounts begin on line 22. Okay, so here's the setup. We're gonna we're gonna write revenue, and then we're gonna take our two revenue accounts. The first one is uh, fees earned, and the second one is rent revenue. So fees earned. And rent revenue, just like that. All right, and we're pulling the number, go all the way out to the last two columns, and uh, those are the numbers we need. So at this point, again, ignore everything else. On the test, the two columns. Okay, it'll be the adjusted numbers. But on this example, where they give you three uh, uh, columns there, or the six columns with three different. Uh, Categories, we need the one all the way up to the end, the adjusted numbers. So for uh, fees earned, it's 283,750. And if you're ahead of me, get this subtotal rate. 283,750. Uh, rent revenue is 3,000. 3,000, so total 3, revenue is 286,750. All right, that takes care of the revenue section. Now, once we got revenue done, we move to expenses. So we just write expenses. And on your exam, I'm not going to have this many expenses. This is a little bit of overkill uh, on the expense thing. So we got we got a lot to uh, to list here. And uh, you know, I'm not going to have that much in the interest of time, so that'll, that'll help you out a little bit. But the main thing to remember, and it will be presented this way, okay, is what? Highest is smallest, miscellaneous is always last. So I'm just going to go start going through here, and uh, line 24 through 32, eight of them, uh, are my expenses. So here we go, salary and wage expense is 147000 and if somebody would get this subtotal ready for me, I would, I would appreciate it. Uh, advertising expense is 86.8. And remember on our expenses, these are expenses take away from revenue to get down to income. So I'll, I, you know, I'll put the little parentheses around them. Uh, 
utilities. And I don't mind you abbreviating EXP for expense. Travel. Travel expense is eighteen seven fifty. Uh, depreciation expense on the building is oh, excuse me, quote now. Equipment is forty five fifty. Depreciation expense on building is three thousand. Supplies expense is fifteen hundred, almost there. Insurance expense. Thirteen hundred and miscellaneous <clears throat> expense is five eight seven five. All right, now once I have everything listed, I'll do total expenses. Okay, and what am I going to do with total expenses? Add that line up right down there. Okay, and my total is. That <laughs> two nine two nine eight seven seven five. Okay. Now we can see at this point that we have a little problem on this one, right? What's different about this one than the other income statements we've looked at? All right. Yeah, we've got more expense than we have revenue. We don't freak out. Okay. The principles, the concept is exactly the same. Okay. Instead of net income down here. We'll call it net loss. And we'll take this number, subtract that number. 12,025. Thank you. And we get minus 12,025. Okay? So if you get on the exam and it works out to be a net loss, nothing really changes. Okay? We still list all the revenue, we list all the expenses. We take this number, subtract this number, we just have a negative number. That's perfectly okay. It happens in businesses all the time. Okay? Uh, now we can't have a bunch of those stacked on top of each other, but it does happen. Okay? So there is, you know, there's an example of a net loss. I just don't want you to panic and freak out if you get a negative number on the test. You're thinking, oh, this can't happen. It can. It's okay. There's your example. Okay? So income statement's done. The next thing we have to do is a uh, statement of owner's equity. So, uh, last chance. Statement of owner equity for year ended 6 30 14. All right, now remember on your statement of owner's equity, I'm going to have five boxes for you. Okay, you'll see. You'll see. Five boxes and then five boxes for numbers. All right? What are the five things that are listed on the statement of owner's equity? It's right down the line. We need what? Gary. What? How's it spelled? It's like G A R R I. Gary. Okay. Garrigan. Garrigan. Capital. Beginning balance. Okay? In the beginning balance, this is a year. All right, the year ends on June 30th, 2014. So, you know, we're trying to capture the previous 12 months. So the beginning of this year would have been what? There you go, July 1st, 2013. All right, that's line number one. The second thing we need to know is, were there any additional investments by the owner? That's question number two. The third thing, specifically net income, in this case though, we have what? Net we have net loss, okay? So we'll subtract out net loss. Fourth line is for owner drawing, and the fifth line 
Garrigan, capital, ending balance, and the ending is going to be this date up here, 6, 30, 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right down the line. Okay? Now remember, this is a tricky spot. So when you get here, just hit the timeout button, take a deep breath, and remember what we have to do. All right? The trick is this. These two lines right there, okay, the first two on there, have to always tie back to what? These tie back to your adjusted balance, okay? The adjusted balance for uh, Tammy Garrigan Capital is 361300 okay? Now, in this uh, particular case, uh, you will see, I'm not going to make an adjustment here, in instruction number two, it says, prepare a statement of owner's equity for the year ended June 30. No additional investments were made during the year. So that means what? This line is it's got to be zero. Okay? So if these two lines have to tie back to my adjusted number, and this one is zero, then this one has to be what? It has to be, I already lost it, 361, 300. 3... 61, 300, okay? The other problem that we worked, was it 401A? Is that what we did? Okay? Remember I changed it. I gave you an additional investment, okay? On the exam, you will have an additional investment, okay? So make sure you know how to handle that scenario. So look at 401A to help you out there. Now, net loss takes away from equity, all right? So i got to show uh, minus... <coughs> 1225 there, okay? Where did I get that number? Pulled it straight from the income statement. So I have to do the income statement first, then the statement of owner's equity. Pull that number straight from the uh, income statement. Owner drawing, where am I going to get that number? we got to go back uh, to the adjusted trial balance. And uh, Tammy Garrigan, this is line 21 on there. Tammy Garrigan drawing is 20000 and remember that's taking money out of the company. All right, so here we go. Once we get to this point, we're ready to add or subtract in this case. Minus 20,000 gives me 329. 275. Now, this number is important because it's going to show up where? It's going to show up over here on the balance sheet. Okay. All right, so income statement done. Statement of owner's equity is done. We feel okay? What did you do with additional investments in this addition? All right, if there's an, say there was an additional investment of $10,000. Okay, remember I need these two lines to tie back to that number in there, which is this one. Okay, so what it would look like is this. Don't write this, I'm just showing DJ, all right? We would say, all right, if you, if you read the instructions that there was an additional investment of 10,000, you'd have that and that, okay? These have to tie back to that number, okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. Balance sheet. Remember, when you're doing your date for your balance sheet, it's just the date. There's no four-year ended on the balance sheet. And I'm going to have three broad categories, assets. Sheet, you will have this 
framework set up. All right, it'll it'll look something like this. I think I have total current assets, and you know, but but you'll have the general framework. Okay, you'll get the idea of where I want you to place things. All right. So, so you'll kind of be looking at something like that right there. You'll be looking at three blank lines at the top. That's for your title. Okay, so make sure you know how to handle that. But this will kind of be your starting point as far as the balance sheet goes. All right? And it's pretty simple. All right? We work our way down this trial balance. And the only real trouble that we're going to have in the asset section, there's two things to watch out for. First is this. What are my current assets? You know, what's the line between current assets and property, plant, and equipment? And remember, 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 this will throw you off worse than anything. When you get down to accumulated depreciation, you're going to see a credit. That's what? That's okay. Accumulated depreciation is a contra what? Asset. Therefore, it's listed in one section. Asset. Do not go over here in the liability section and list accumulated depreciation, okay? It doesn't go there. I know it has a credit balance. It's fine, okay? It goes in the asset section. So here we go. First thing is cash. Cash, accounts receivable, uh, prepaid insurance, supplies, Uh, land. Land is, is what? PPE. Yeah, land is down here. Property. Land. Okay. Cash balance, 5100 Accounts receivable balance, 265 Prepaid insurance, 2300 Supplies, 525. Total current assets, if we add those up, we've got 34, like that. Okay. 34, 425. With me? Then we drop down, we have land. We have building, we have accumulated depreciation, on said building, we have equipment, and accumulated depreciation on the equipment. Okay, those are my five assets. Uh, land, the balance in land is 80000 Building is 340000 The accumulated depreciation on the building, remember, contra asset, okay, so it's got to be show, uh, shown that way, is 193000 The way that we show this, Put it in parentheses, just like that. Uh, equipment is 140000 Accumulated depreciation on the equipment is 59000 Okay, and this is where we have to be smart. Uh, the next thing listed is accounts payable. When I see the word payable, that's what? That's a liability. Okay, so we have to, you know, have the wherewithal. We're not just listing things down. We're putting them in a certain place. Okay, so once you see accounts payable, stop. Okay, accounts payable goes over here. We'll total up. Property, plant, equipment, Xavier. Three hundred eight thousand. Three hundred eight. Even. Okay, thank you. 308 even. Okay, don't leave this off. Total assets. We're going to do what? Boom, boom. Add those. Don't do this. All right? Don't add up all these, add that, add up all these, and that. You're going to double count. Okay? So make sure at this point.
is you only grab what? Only grab those subtotals. Okay? And the amount? 342. Four twenty-five. That's three, four, two, four, two, five. The check figure is there. You will not have the check figure on the test. So don't get used to it, but it's kind of sloppy. It's down by the bottom. Three forty-two. Four twenty-five. Okay. All right. How are we? It's fast pace. Tempo offense. You freeze. All right. You good? All right. Liability section. We've got uh, accounts payable, salary and wages payable, and this is going to be the one that's a little bit of a challenge. Unearned rent. Okay? Unearned rent is a liability that does not have payable sitting there. All right? So that's what we got to recognize and we got to be smart on. I can tell you the tendency is going to be to do this. Okay? Even though you know that on this adjusted trial balance, it's asset liability, equity, revenue, expense. I see it every single test. Somebody takes unearned rent and throws it where? On the income statement. Where? In the revenue section. Okay? So unearned, unearned rent is one of those things that we've got to be smart about. Okay? When we see unearned rent, we have to properly identify it as a liability. Okay? There's got to be something in the brain that, that puts those two together. Unearned rent is liability. All right? So we've got uh, accounts payable. Salary and wages payable, and unearned rent. Okay? So if I can identify where they go, it's just a matter of pulling that number uh, off of the adjusted trial balance. Accounts payable is $9,750. Salary and wages payable is $1,900. Okay? 
So if you can take this, all right, I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about by transposing numbers. Uh, instead of 5,100, say I wrote 1,500, okay? Uh, the difference in those two numbers is 3,600, all right? So, so here's what I'm getting at. If you get down here and you take the different, take the difference in the two numbers, all right, if, if these are unbalanced, okay, take the difference in the two numbers. If it's divisible by 9, okay, see how I can divide this by 9, right, and get 400, okay. If the number is divisible by 9, the difference, you transpose the number, okay, that's what that means, okay. So go back through here and make sure you didn't flip a number somewhere, okay, and you know, maybe pulling this number off of here, you said 392, 275. Okay? If you did something like that, find the difference in those two, divide by nine. If you get a whole number, you transpose something somewhere. Okay? So a lot of times that can cut out on time. Um, after that, you know, if it doesn't work out after those two things, uh, then we gotta go back over here, make sure we got the numbers right. Pulled everything from here correctly, got these numbers right, pulled everything from here correctly, and then moved over here. Okay? If you run out of time and you're still not balanced, I'm going to give you partial credit. Okay? It's, it's not a zero on the test if these numbers don't balance each other. Okay? So write what you have, uh, put down what you know, and, and you will get some credit. You're not going to get full credit, but uh, you will get some credit. Alright? Now, work's not quite over. We're getting there. We got that? Got it? All right, closing entries. There are four. We got a closed revenue, we got a closed expenses. Uh, we got a closed income summary, and then closed drawing. All right? So, on 632.14, all right? The entry to close revenue, we're doing what? We're just zeroing out all the revenue accounts, okay? So very simple. To zero out a revenue account, we have to debit revenue, and we credit what? Remember? Income summary. Good, all right? So um, I had fees earned, and I think rent revenue, and I'm going to credit... Income summary. Okay? That's something right there. It'll always be that way. We'll always debit our revenue accounts. We'll always credit income summary to close revenue. Fees earned was 283,750. And rent revenue, I think, was 3,000. Okay? So we'll add those up. 286,750. Alright? Now remember, this is something I'm not necessarily going to ask you to do, but to fully understand and grasp what's going on, let's think about it for a second. And anytime I do a journal entry, the very next step is what? I post. Okay? So when I post this, debit of 283.750 to fees earned, what's that going to do to the fees earned account? It's going to make it zero. When I post this $3,000 debit to rent revenue, it's going to do what to the rent revenue account? Make it zero. So these make those accounts reset back to zero. It's one of the things we have to do, okay? Income summary, we haven't dealt with yet, all right? So here's what income summary is gonna look like over here. Income summary, I have a 286, 750 on the credit side, okay? That is my entry to close revenue. That's all I can do, all right? Next thing I do is what? Remember read, R-A-I-D. Close. Expenses. Expenses have normal debit balances, therefore to close them, make them go to zero, I've got to do what to my expenses? I've got to credit my expenses. Alright, so again, I'll cut you a little bit of slack here, you can just do total expenses on that one. You can, you can summarize. 
You can do you can say total expenses just like that, and I'll be I'll be perfectly fine with it. Or my total expenses. Got it? I can figure it out right quick. Two ninety eight seven seventy five. Now again, let's think about this. What is this going to do? Now remember, I'm summarizing every expense account in one line. Okay? So what's going to happen is this total amount is going to get distributed out to all the individual expense accounts. And when this credit hits the individual expense accounts, what's going to happen to my expense accounts? They're going to go to zero, right? So my revenue accounts are all at zero, my expense accounts are all at zero. Okay? Income summary was debited. For 298,775. Okay? Now this is called income summary because it does what? It summarizes the income statement. Alright? There's revenue, there's expense. So the balance and income summary should always tie back to my net income, or in this case, net loss figure. Okay? Little hint. If I have a debit balance and income summary, it means I have what? Net loss. If I have a credit balance and income summary, after these first two entries, it means what? It means I've got net income. All right? The third closing entry is to close income summary. All right? Now, this entry is going to look different than the one we did on 4-1A. Why? Because we have a net loss. Okay? So, so remember the question is always this. How do I make this account go to zero? If I've got a 12, you know, don't worry about what it's called, just, just look at it. If I've got a debit balance of 12,025, how do I make that go to zero? I've got to plug in a credit for 12,025. Okay? So I know, in this case, I'm going to have to credit income summary for 12,000. And once I do that, what do we do? We generalize, we immediately post 12,025. Income summary is what? Income summary is gone. Okay? What's my offset? We close income summary into capital. Here again. Now here we are debiting an equity account. Does that make sense in this case? It does because we have a net loss. Now I don't want you to be confused. Okay? When you compare this problem to 4-1A, you're going to see that what this entry is flipped in 4-1A. Why is it flipped? We had net income in 4-1A. On your exam, you're going to have net income. You're not going to have a net loss. Okay, you'll have net income. So, you know, study 4 1A uh, to get that right. Last thing we do is close drawing. This entry always looks the same. Drawing is a contra equity account. So, it's an equity account with a normal debit balance. How do I get rid of a debit balance? I credit, all right? So, I'm going to credit. Garrigan drawing and debit Garrigan capital. The drawing amount is twenty thousand dollars. Twenty thousand, twenty thousand, just like that. And what happened to the drawing account? It's gone. Okay? So all my revenue accounts are gone. All my expense accounts are gone. Income summary is gone. And now drawing is gone. Okay? All those have zero balances. Okay? So I'm finally here. Last chance. Post closing trial balance. 
see this very cool thing. What shows up on the post closing trial balance? The post closing trial balance looks like this. Okay? So I should only see what? Assets, liability, and equity. Okay? And within equity, I should not see drawing. Why shouldn't I see drawing? Because I just closed it. Okay? So asset, liability, and equity is going to look just like this over here. Okay? So here we go. I list my assets first. I go right down the line. Cash, accounts receivable, prepaid insurance, supplies. I'm not worried about current and long term at this point. I just list them. Land. Building, accumulated depreciation on building, equipment, accumulated depreciation on the equipment, accounts payable, salary and wages payable, on earned rent, <coughs> and Garrigan. You notice what I did on the post-closing trial balance? I went straight to the balance sheet and wrote down the accounts. Okay, just listed them in order. Asset, liability, equity. All right. Uh, remember on trial balances, we do have a debit and a credit. Cash is an asset account, has a debit balance of 1500 Accounts receivable, asset, debit balance of 265 Prepaid insurance, asset debit balance of 2300 supplies, asset debit balance of 525 land, 80000 building, 340000 Accumulated appreciation on the building is what? Contra asset, okay? Don't do this on the post-closing trial balance. Don't say 193000 with parentheses around in the debit column. Okay? It's a credit. So I've got to swing out here to the credit. 193. Equipment is 140. Accumulated depreciation on the equipment is 59000 Accounts payable, 9000 750, salary and wages, 1900, unearned rent, 1500, and finally, Gary and Capital is 329. Now, I don't give you as many expense accounts. I'm probably not going to give you as many asset accounts to deal with. That way, you know, every little bit helps. Um, so you've got two examples. 
okay, of what's going to you got 4-1A and you got 4-1B what we did today, okay, um, of, of what the exam is going to look like. All right, just a couple of things before you go. Um, the exam Friday, next time you walk in here, is uh, all the theory, okay, so theory from chapter 3 and 4, and um, let me just kind of tell you a couple things to look out for in uh, chapter 3. The objectives you need to be worried about are 1, 2, 3, and 4. And really spend some time in objective 1. Okay? That's where the theoretical base for why we do all this is laid out. So really spend some time in objective 1 in the adjusting process. Uh, in four, uh, objective one, two, three, uh, four, and six. One, two, three, four, and six. Okay? One, two, three, four, and six. So, just so you'll hear it one more time. What you need to be ready for on Friday is this. Theory on everything. Three and four, okay? And then the problem associated with chapter three. What's that going to be? It's going to be this. Uh, I will give you, you'll be looking at an unadjusted trial balance, okay? I'll give you adjusting data for five entries. You have to take the adjusting data, do the entries, okay? Uh, from those entries, then you'll have to do an adjusted trial balance. That's it, okay? Then Monday, when you come back in here, you'll have this. Okay? It's tough. It's doable. Okay? It's, it's entirely possible. I, I gave the test uh, in my AGP class. Somebody made 100 on it. So it's, it's entirely possible to do it. Okay? I know it feels a little overwhelming, but you can do it. Don't forget, we will have assigned seats. I'll have it mixed up, mixed all around. So you know, don't come in here and plop down in your normal seat. Uh, you'll have a different seat. Friday. Remember calculators, no big massive laptop like that. Just this right here, no phones, uh, no music, no translators, none of that. Okay?